Isn't that what you have us read this morning? John chapter 2. I had you read John chapter 2. To let you know that that wasn't the first time that Jesus went up in there. Okay. And that's why my subject this morning is reaching the boiling point. Amen? Amen. Reaching the boiling point. Now we have all had an occasion where we got upset about something. When we hear the phrase boiling point, the first thing that comes to mind is water. And water boil. And you know that when water boils, there's two things you can say about it. One, it's hot. And two, it can be deadly and dangerous. Oh, yeah. But you know something else can boil too. You've heard the expression, her blood or his blood was boiling. And likewise, with water, when a person's blood starts to boil, two things are probably true. One, they are hot, okay. angry, and they could be dangerous and even deadly. Am I the only one who practically probably thinks that there are a lot of folks locked up in prison for the rest of their lives simply because they got angry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They locked up because their blood started to boil and like with the water, they became dangerous and deadly. But see, this message that I want to convey to you this morning is about reaching the boiling point, but not doing anything. Because see, the word of God says, be angry, but sin not. Amen? Amen. See, you can be angry about something, but you don't have to right. sin. Right. You don't have to retaliate. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. When I was growing up, my mother taught us to count to ten and then walk away. I think I told you this before. She said that ten seconds will save you ten years in prison. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so be angry. Jesus, you know God got angry, didn't he? Oh, yes, he did. He destroyed the world. Did God get angry? That's why I always refer back to Genesis 26 where it says, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. In other words, if God can be angry, why can't we? If God can get angry about something, why can't we? If God can get upset about something, why can't we? And likewise, if we get upset about something, why can't God be upset about something? Amen? Amen. But the word of God says, be angry, but sin not. If that's what God does, God, God can get angry, but he sins not. Jesus didn't go up in that temple and kill folks, did he? But he whipped them. He turned over their tables. He, he, he chased them. Early in his ministry, which is what you read in the uh, 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 response reading, early in his ministry, what happened after the wedding of Canaan? He went up to Capernaum and he went into the temple. And what did he do? He turned over tables and he whipped them. Because, see, he had reached his boiling point. And he said, you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves. Because what they were doing wasn't right. They were cheating people. They were not. Uh, they were not selling them pure animals. Which, if you read your Bible, back when God told Moses to build this tabernacle, which eventually became the temple, this is how you are supposed to sacrifice, and this is what you're supposed to sacrifice, and this is the condition the sacrifice will be in. In other words, it's supposed to be perfect. Okay. And that's why Jesus was chosen as the final sacrifice, because he was perfect. 
He was without blemish and without sin. Just like the sacrifices in the old days when Moses was told what to do. But see, they had started to, to, to do everything. They had started to, 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 to sacrifice blemished animals, sick animals, and nobody seemed to care. The priest didn't care, the high priest didn't care, the Pharisees didn't care. They were getting a cut back. They were probably getting paid by those, those money changers. Nobody seemed to care about the true religion. And the same thing is prevalent in church today. A lot of churches are not concerned with your soul. They're concerned with your pocket. They're not concerned with your, your destiny. They're concerned about their titles. And it makes some folks angry. Oh, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Anger, retributory punishment for an offense or a crime, divine chastisement. Mm -hmm. A strong feeling of displeasure and usually of antagonism. You know, some of the things that I see going on in churches today angers me. And one of the things that really angers me, not necessarily in church, it's out there in the streets as well. Yeah. When I see authority not being obeyed. All right. Mm -hmm. Because see the word of God, and I've said it already twice today. Obey those in authority over you. Yeah. For they watch for your soul. Children, obey your parents. Wives, submit yourself to your husband in all things. That's the problem. We picking and choosing. Well, I'll obey the assistant pastor, but I won't obey the pastor. I'll obey the I'll obey the I'll obey the chairman of the trustee board, but I won't obey, obey the deacons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that expression? Newsflash? A deacon has more authority than the chairman of the trustee board. Did you know that? The chairman of the trustee board works under the deacon who works under the pastor or the associate or the clergy. I'll obey the president of the, of the nurses' guild, but I won't obey the superintendent of Sunday school. We're picking and choosing whom we shall obey, and instead of following the word of God, that says obey those. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. And sometimes we we find ourselves reaching that boiling point. Oh, we get angry. Oh, I, 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 you want to say some things? The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Do you know I still get angry? Just like I did when I was a child. I see things I don't like, I get angry about it. But you know, I do the same thing nowadays that I did as I was taught as a child. I just walk away. I don't sit there and engage. Because two things will happen. Somebody gonna win and somebody gonna lose. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Now the word, when you read this, this subject today, you saw this word zeal in there. When you read it, you saw this word zeal. Eagerness or ardent interest in pursuing of something. When I came through those doors two and a half years ago, I had this zeal. Because I knew why I was here. The Lord showed me why you are here. And you know why he showed me? Because 
I ask you, why am I here? I'm standing right there looking out over this sanctuary. And the Lord answered my question. The way he answers questions when I ask him, he showed me why I was here. Because see, if you don't have a purpose, sometimes you can find yourself lost. Yeah. Like that example I gave those children this morning about walking to school, walking down this block. They were walking down that block because they were trying to get to school. Okay. But what if they weren't trying to get to school? They were just walking down that block. They could be distracted by other things. Okay. Next thing you know, they're across the street. Doing things they shouldn't be doing. Oh, yeah. There is a righteous anger. However, as when Jesus condemned the misuse of the temple. You see, sometimes there is a such thing as a righteous anger. Meaning you have a right to be angry. Do you, how many of you know what justifiable homicide is? You heard of that phrase before? Oh, yeah. You know what justifiable homicide is? I'll give you an example. A husband comes home from work early and finds his wife with the gardener and they are in the bedroom and they're doing things they shouldn't be doing and he kills that gardener. The law says that it's justified. It's a crime of passion. Now, I'm going to show you how the law works. Now, how does God see it? God sees it as murder. Don't. But then God said, well, wait a minute. Is there anywhere in the Bible that you read where God tells a man, do not be angry or jealous for the sake of your wife? I haven't found it. Oh yeah, remember it says, do not be envious. No, 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 not being envious. You can be envious of a lot of things. But see, God says that the woman, the wife, belongs to the husband. And he has every right to protect her. And every right to want her and cherish her. And likewise, that woman is his and his body is her. Y'all read it before. She belongs to him and he belongs to her. And he has every right. And the law sees that way too. Now, if he walks in the room, turn around, walk back out, go out to the garage, get his shotgun, come back, go up in the room, and blow him away in. That's, he going to jail for the rest of his oh. life. Ain't he? Oh, yeah. Ain't justifiable because he had time to think about it. Yeah. Even God says it's murder. Because see, with God, there's no distinctions anyway. Just like when Jesus did, when he walked him into that temple. I'm talking about the second time. Because see, after, after he rode into town, and they cheered him, and they him. he went up into that temple. And this time, he turned over tables and started whipping on them and chasing them up out of there. Some would say that he knew that they would no longer be needed because what happened five days later he was crucified, which the prophets of old said, the Lamb of God will be sacrificed. And Jesus was supposed to be the final sacrifice. In other words, there was no need to have any more sacrifices at that temple. And if you didn't have to sacrifice anymore, you didn't need the money changers anymore, did you? Amen. But see, they didn't get it. It didn't sink in that he was the final sacrifice. So they continued to have sacrifices there in the manner in which they were sacrificing, which was wrong. Okay. Jesus tried to tell them, you don't need these money changers anymore. Because you don't need to sacrifice anymore. I am the final sacrifice. But they didn't listen. And they continue to sacrifice. I, you know, even though the word of God says that Jesus was the final sacrifice, even John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes from the sin of the world. 
John the Baptist said that. They didn't have to sacrifice in that temple, did they? They could still worship God. They just didn't have to do the sacrificing. But because they let religion get in the way, oh, just like some churches today, they let religion get in the way of moving forward. Well, that's the way we've always done it. Well, guess what? Times change. Fifty years ago, they didn't take credit cards in church. They take them now. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, they take them now. And I just want you to know, God don't need your money. Now I want y'all running around talking about brother said, "Don't come, don't don't bring money to church no more." God, the church needs the money because see, that's why the people gave back in the beginning of the church. They gave to support the church. And the, the things that the church was doing. They didn't, they didn't give so that the pastor could have a nice horse <laughs> or a nice house to live in. Right. They gave so that it would support the deeds and, and the needs of the church. Oh, yeah. And it angers me when I hear people say, I'm not giving because. You know what angers me more than that? When a pastor says that tithes and offering ain't going to support the church. That angers me. You know why? Because why would I follow a man who don't believe the word of God? And if the word of God says you do as I say concerning tithes and offerings, he said try me by this. He said bring your, 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 your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. And I will bless you. And then he says, try me by this. In other words, I dare you not to do it. Okay. If a pastor don't believe that,
the word of God. A patient man. You see, a lot of people have accused me of running in difficult situations. Junior known for running. No. A junior known for waiting. I remember, and you know, I'm not necessarily proud of this, but it is it, 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 to make a point. A young girl hurt my feelings in 1976. I was in love, and she hurt me. I cried. I was hurt. Think of anything else but that hurt. And so I set about. See, I wasn't a preacher then. I wasn't a deacon. I was just somebody who was a member of a church. So I had vengeance in my heart. And it took two years. I worked on it for two years. And I got my revenge. <laughs> she was crying like a baby. Just like I was crying like a baby two years ago. Two years ago. I got my revenge. Three months later, I married her. Ain't that crazy? And was married to her for almost 17 years. Isn't that crazy? You know what he tells me? I wasted two good years of my life. Did I? In 1977, a woman did something that I didn't like. I got angry. And it wasn't until 1997 that I let it go. So for 20 years, there I was hanging on to this hurt. Now, I got a sign on my wall of wisdom that says that when you hate, the only one that suffers is you. Yeah, right, all right. The only person that suffered in those 20 years was me. She moved on with her life, but I was still stuck in 1977. I'm going to tell you how bad it got. Her name was Regina. And every time I saw that name, I got angry. I'm driving down 8 Mile over by Eastland. And I see Regina High School, and I got angry. <laughs> That's what anger does to you. I missed my Eastland turn because I got so angry. I didn't even want to drive by school. I was just angry. But her life went on. And then one day in 1997, the Holy Spirit descended upon me and said, let it go. Let it go, deacon. See, I was a deacon then. Let it go. And I did. And you know I felt good after that? Proverbs says, the king's wrath is a messenger of death, but a wise man will appease it. Sometimes you have to accept the situation for what it really is and deal with it. Don't pursue it. Let go and let God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've heard that before. Yeah. Let go and let God. I told you last week, I believe it was, that I prayed over my daughter at the hospital. And then I went home and I slept like a baby. And I got up the next day and I went down to that hospital and she was still here. Oh, yeah. Because I let go and let go. Yeah, right. And this July, she'll be 40 years old. Amen. I know some of you probably think, well, Reverend, she's going to be 40 and you 39. And how does that work? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> So, the points of this message. One, be angry, but sin not. Have a good reason for, did Jesus have a good reason for being angry? Yes! 
Sometimes we get angry over nothing. We get angry over nothing. We get angry because somebody says something that we don't like. Newsflash, you heard it. But there are probably a lot of other people saying something that you ain't heard about you. Oh yeah. Keep that in mind the next time you hear something said about you you don't like. Uh-huh. The same principle, remember that discipline right here? When you point your finger, three is pointing at you. Yeah. What's that say? You probably ain't gonna prove it off than the person you <laughs> judge. <laughs> The word of God tells us to judge not lest you be judged. Because the same measure that you judge, so will you be judged. Right. That's why I don't judge. You know, I don't judge nobody. There are some people who actually came up to me and said, what about him? And I said, what about him? Well, what about her? What about him? Who am I to judge? You have to have zeal for the house of God. Oh, yeah. And zeal for the inheritance of the house of God. Mm-hmm. You have to obey the word of God regardless of who is concerned. Because we are all equal in the eyes of God. Right. Oh, yeah. And the word says all have seen and come short of my glory. Amen. So in the eyes of God, I am no better than you. I am no worse than you. Because all have seen and come short of my glory. And newsflash, all includes everybody. Man, Woman, children, old folks, young folks. It includes everybody. Remember when 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 uh, God told Saul to go in and kill the Amalekites, what did he tell Saul to do? Kill everybody. Well, what about no everybody? He told Saul to kill every breathing thing. And what did Saul do? About. There's some good stuff over there. We can use some of that stuff. But there's a reason God told him to get rid of all of it because there was no good. Okay. Get rid of all of it. That was the word of God. And he disobeyed God. And what happened when he disobeyed God? See, it's one thing to disobey man. But when you disobey God, God took his kingdom from him. The only person that didn't know that God took his kingdom from him was him. <laughs> you, have, you ever been in a relationship and that relationship was over? The only, the only person that didn't know it was over was you. <laughs> When I broke up with a woman back in the day, I was done. When I broke up with a woman back in the day, <laughs> she thought it was her idea to get rid of me. <laughs> she did. Almost every relationship I had back then. When she broke up with me, I had broke up with her two months before she broke up with me. <laughs> Amen. I had broke up with her two months before she told me, I don't call you no more. I wasn't calling you anyway. And I wasn't. That's why she got upset. Because I wasn't calling. Don't come by my house. I ain't been by your house too much. That should have told you something. But sometimes we get angry and we say things that we shouldn't say. We do things that we shouldn't do. Anger 
will cause you to do something that's out of character. Jesus had went around, and I'm talking about the second time here. Jesus went around for three years talking about love one another. But what did he do at this point? His anger came out, and he started whipping people. Sometimes anger will cause you to do things that's outside of your character. There's a lot of folks in prison, a lot of people in jail right now, who if you had asked the next door neighbor about it, their next door neighbor would have said, well, I never thought they would do something like that. That's what anger will do. That's why the Bible says, be angry with seeing not. Anger is a natural feeling. But sin is not. Sin is optional. Did you know that? That's why the word says, be angry, but sin not. Because it is an option. You are, a, you are born in sin, but you don't have to live a sinful life. You are a sinner, but you do not have to live a sinful life. A sinful life. How is that possible, Reverend? If I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. But you don't have to do sinful things. I'll give you a better example of that. You go down south of the Mason-Dixon line, and you go back on one of them back roads, and a white person sees you, what do they think you are? What will they call you? They will call you the N-word. Right? But you don't have to act like one, do you? Yeah. Up until a few years ago, you were considered a Negro. Oh, yeah. That's what you were. Mm -hmm. Right? There was no escaping it. They even had it on the applications. White, Negro, American Indian. Mm -hmm. And what box did you check? Mm -hmm. Negro. Unless you was one of them can pass. <laughs> you know, you take the white box because you got that straight hair and that light skin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish with Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And that's why God, that's one of the reasons God destroyed the temple. Because they had no vision of what he was trying to tell them. Ah, okay. Jesus was the final sacrifice. This building is no longer needed for sacrificing. You can worship only. But they continued to sacrifice. And 70 years later, what did God do? He got rid of that house. Didn't he? And the main people who they thought Jesus would come to get rid of, got rid of them. The Romans, they leveled that house. Pompeii marched through there and leveled it, and it hasn't been rebuilt since. And based on where it is or where it was and what's there now, the likelihood is very slim. All right. Mm -hmm. You see, when there is no vision, if one of the reasons I was here. It's because God showed me a vision. And I looked around and I saw what he had shown me and I went to work. I think I said this last week. Sometimes God doesn't give the lay person or the congregation the vision. He gives it to the pastor. And then the pastor disseminates it to the congregation. Okay, all right. But if they're not listening, or if they got their, their uh, what's the expression? Set in their ways. Oh, yeah. They won't see the vision. And the word of God says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I talked about this last week too. That church down there in Houston, the man had a vision 
and the people rallied around that man. Mm -hmm. He had 90 members, but he kept the vision in front of those people, and he kept saying, one day, one day, one day, one day. And they kept that vision in front of them. And now they have 50,000 members. Amen. God showed, Sister Crittenden was here. God showed us a vision of this sanctuary full of people last year. Didn't it, Sister Crittenden? We saw this sanctuary full of people. There were people all down this aisle, all down this aisle, all down this aisle. This church was full of folks. Oh, yes. God showed us that it is possible. And every church in the area was closed, but this one was full. Oh, yeah. God was trying to show us that it is possible. Yeah. I got a chance to see it. Yeah. But see, God has showed it to me two years before when I was standing in that balcony. I looked down there and this church was full of folks. Mm -hmm. Didn't see why, but didn't matter. Mm -hmm. He showed it to me and it came true. So, be, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be unhappy about something. It's okay not to like something. But you have to be better than that. Jesus didn't kill anybody that day. He made an example of them. He foretold, he, he prophesied by chasing them out of there. Yeah. He tried to, I tell you, I said, he tried to let them know you are no longer needed. All right, all right. And if they had said, well, we don't have the money changes anymore, that means we're not going to have the sacrificial animals no more, so we might as well stop sacrificing. I think all would have been well with God. All they had to do now was just have their worship service. No sacrifice going on. No need to atone for sins because you can now go to God with your sins for yourself. Yes. Amen. Don't need me to pray for you no more. Don't need for me to atone for your sins anymore. You can atone for with God yourself. Yes. That's where prayer comes in. It's even included in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Yeah. How can you expect God to forgive you yeah. if you don't have the capacity to forgive us? All right. All right. How can you expect God to love you yeah. if you don't have the capacity to love us? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. Even though you don't expect it, he still does. Yeah. Right. I've heard people say, Lord, why do you love me? I am no good to nobody. That's right. You are no good to nobody. God is a, not, a nobody. Okay. Right. Even though you may not think of it, think about it. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Or something about that preacher this morning, yeah. Okay. Even in your darkest hour. Yes. Even at the lowest point of your life, you are not alone. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The word of God is true, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Yes. He says, I will never leave you. I will be with you always. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Even until the end of the world. Amen. He didn't Amen. say the earth. Mm -hmm. He said the world. And one day, this world will pass away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You ever read in the Bible where it says, 
a new earth. Oh yeah. And a new heaven. Yes. And this is just something. Why would it be necessary to have a new heaven? What was wrong with the old? We knew what was wrong with the new. We knew why we needed a new earth. There's something wrong with the old. But why do we need a new heaven? Must have been something wrong with it. It wasn't perfect anymore. All right. Was it? Wasn't perfect. But look it up for yourself. They had a war in heaven. There was a war in heaven. It was no longer perfect. Yeah. Satan got thrown out. Yeah. All of his yeah. followers got yeah. thrown out. Yeah. There was an actual war going on up there. Yeah. And you know what happened when there's a war? There's casualties. There's a war going on in a lot of churches right now. All right. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some casualties. Yes. Oh, somebody going to get hurt. Yes. Somebody going to get tired. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to get sick. Yes. Nobody going to die. Yes. He's out hope now. I hope you ain't that mad at your pastor. Yes. Amen. Yes. But you know there's something that you can die from. Separation. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, when Satan told, uh, when Eve told Satan what God said about dying, what did Satan say? Oh, no, he ain't going to kill you. See? He lied to her. Yes, he did. But like Satan, he didn't give her the whole loaf. Say that. He forgot to say, oh, by the way, there's a spiritual death and there's a physical death. When God said he would surely die, he was talking about the spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Because that's what God did, didn't he? Oh, yes. He cut off his relationship with man. Oh, yeah. See, Satan forgot to tell her that. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. He's not going to kill you in the physical sense. He's going to kill you in the spiritual sense with me. He ain't going to be around here no more for you. But you can still go home and do what you're going to do because that's what's going to happen. He is not going to just kill you. But see, that's what she thought. Because he said, oh, no, nah, he ain't going to kill you. Yeah. Tell you something else. When Satan approached that, I don't know what y'all are saying. No, 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 no. If you ever work with Satan, you know I used to be an adjunct. I used to be an adjunct employee of Satan Incorporated back in the day. And I know how my boss worked. Mm. My boss always goes after the head first. All right. All he right. goes after the pastor of the church. Yeah. Yeah. He even went after the head of the church, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he knew if he got Jesus, All right. he got the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. He goes after the father in the family. Yeah. Because he knows if he got the father, yeah. he got the rest of the family. Oh, yes. So I believe he went up to, I believe it. Yeah. And Adam told him what? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Not me. Sorry, brother. God said it. My father said it. So what did he do? He went to the next person. You know what people did? And that's why the word of God said it was Eve that was deceived. Yes, yes. Now why would God say it was Eve that was deceived? Yes. That's a comparative statement, meaning somebody else wasn't deceived. All right. And if somebody else wasn't deceived, that means Satan had to have approached them to attempt deception. Yes. Did he? Yes. Yeah. That's why the woman is always referred to as what? The weaker, the weaker sex. Yes. Yeah. Now, why would they say that unless there was positive proof that she was weaker? Yes. Yeah. Man had to be tested as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And man must have passed. Why do you think the woman got the brunt of the punishment? Mm. Didn't she? Oh yeah. Not only, not only did she did she have to have kids, and every one of y'all here know what it means to have kids. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh Lord, that's the worst pain in the world. Oh yeah. And then you got to deal with it for eighteen years. Yeah. <laughs> you might even have a child like me. <laughs> yes, sir. But. Not only is she burdened with childbirth, she got to be under the thumb of that man. That's right. That's, that's got to be more painful than childbirth for some women. Right. Being under the thumb of a man. All right. Hmm. But
But that's the punishment that she had as a result of disobeying God. That's right. Man got off easy. Oh, yeah. He just got to work for a living. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. So, be angry or say not. Say it not. Obey those in authority over you. Mm -hmm. All right. Let go and let go. Yes, sir. This is Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. This is called Holy Week. It's called Holy Week for a reason. Mm -hmm. On Thursday night, according to mm -hmm. history, Jesus is arrested. Yeah. Prophecy said the shepherd will be smited and the flock will fool. Yes. Isn't that right? Yeah. Jesus said, every one of you will abandon me tonight. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Not me, Lord. Oh, yes, yes. And they did. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And they marched him from place to place all night long. Mm -hmm. And then finally he was beaten. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the people were given a choice. All right. Jesus all right. or Barabbas. All right. All right. And they chose for us. Yes, they did. Pilate said, This man has done nothing. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Mm -hmm. And the same folks that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, mm -hmm. all right, yelled out, Crucify him. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yeah, and so they marched him up Calvary. Mm. And they Placed him between two feet. Oh, yes. They pierced him in the side. Oh. And then he gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. But before he gave up the ghost, he said, It is finished. Amen. Yeah. That's what some of you need to say about things going on in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is finished. It is finished. Yeah. I'm done with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then walk away. All right. And don't look back. Mm -hmm. You ever tried to drive your car looking through the rearview mirror? <laughs> That's what a lot of folks do. Mm -hmm. They drive their car. Looking through the rearview mirror, they're, they're, they're going through their lives, looking through the rearview mirror, and, and missing all the stuff that's in front of them. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. And then he gave up the ghost, yes, and they placed him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. And then they rolled the stone, right. and they went on about their business. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then early Sunday morning, when a woman came by, she saw the stone rolled away. All right. And she went in, and there was no one there because he had arisen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because see, on that third day, he arose from the grave with all power in his hand. He had took the sting out of death. He had defeated death. He had taken the keys of life and death from Satan. Yes. And that's where we are today. Mm. Oh, yes. He redeemed us. Yes. He reconciled us. Oh, yes. And he took us out of the curse of the law. You see, we were under the curse of the law. The law was cursed. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus, when he died and was resurrected, removed us. We are no longer under the law. We are under the grace and mercy and generosity of Christ. Oh, yes. Say that, sir. Say that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. He removed the curse of the law from you. Mm -hmm. He said, I come not to destroy the law. Mm -hmm. The law is still there. Oh, yeah. He didn't come to destroy it, but he came to fulfill it. He came to enhance it. The law included the Ten Commandments, but then he said, I give you two new commandments. Mm -hmm. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. 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 Love God. Yes. You see, if you love God, you ain't got to worry about loving nobody else. All right. Did you know that? If you love God, you ain't got to worry about loving nobody else. Love God and those folks that you're around will know that, they, that you love them based on your love of God. Yeah. A lot of folks think that we got to say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. God already knows you love him. All you have to do is feel it. Mm -hmm. And then your love for him will disseminate to those people around you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think Jesus was basically known by how much he loved others, but by how much others loved him. Yes. How many of you love Jesus? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I asked a question years ago in a sanctuary and more shocked and living day by some people. How many of you would die for Jesus? Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. And then I said, how many of you live for Jesus? Yeah. Oh, yes. Didn't get too many responses. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. It is harder to live for Jesus than it is to die for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Did you know that? Yeah. It is harder to live for him than it is to die. You can yeah. die for him, that's it. Yeah. On this side. Oh, but if you live for him. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you live for Jesus. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be so many rewarding moments in your life. Right. You're going to be changed, aren't you, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be changed, and it doesn't matter what other people think about you. It's what God thinks oh, about you. Yeah. Oh, that's the biggest problem we have with black folks. We worry about what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I worried about what other people thought about me, Lord, I'd be in a world of trouble. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes. I'm going to tell you how. I'm not even worried about what God thinks about me. Mm -hmm. Because I know what he thinks about me. Mm -hmm. I don't sit there wondering, Lord, how do you feel about me? I know how he feels about me. He loves me. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm his favorite. Right. And each and every one of you are God's favorite. All right, man, Even if you don't feel like it. <laughs> Even if you don't look like it. You are. All right. He's our father. Yes, he is. He loves us. Yes. Despite Say what it. we are. Yes. Despite what we've done. All right. He has forgiven us not only for what we've done, but what we intend to do. Mm -hmm. Because he knows what's in here. Oh, yeah, he Jesus knew what was in those people's hearts when he went up into that temple. Oh, he yeah. knew it. Yes, he But he did it anyway. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, they're going to be mad at you, Jesus. Don't go up in there. Mm -hmm. You turn the tables over. Oh, boy. They might jump you. Jesus wasn't worried about that. No, <laughs> He could have put him to sleep. It didn't bother him. He had the power to do anything. Yeah. May God bless you. Okay. And may God keep you. Yes. Yeah. The doors of the church are open.